some things to get to here. Number one, let's start off with uh, the announcement on Brett Kavanaugh and how it relates to the guy he used to clerk for, Justice Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Was there any discussion at the White House talk with Justice Kennedy about his support for Kavanaugh prior to the nomination? Well, the rumor mill about some sort of a, a deal or a quid pro quo is entirely uh, incorrect and false. Uh, I want to state that out of the gate. Obviously, uh, Justice Kennedy talked to the president on the day of his retirement, um, you know, and, and uh, Judge Kavanaugh clerked for him. So uh, there's obviously a fondness there. But uh, the president made this choice himself. Um, Judge Kavanaugh was on his list of potential Supreme Court nominees added last year. Um, and he has uh, over 300 opinions, which the president cited over a mm -hmm. dozen that have been affirmed at the Supreme Court level, uh, and many that have been cited by uh, appellate courts and lower courts across the country, hundreds actually, uh, on hundreds of occasions. So, so uh, this man stands on his own merits. Let me, I want to talk more about some of those cases you referenced, but just to be clear here, was the relationship between Kennedy and Kavanaugh, did Justice Kennedy express his support for Kavanaugh to the president, to Don McGahn, to folks at the White House prior to the president picking him? I, I'm going to let Justice Kennedy uh, speak for himself, but the president's selection of uh, Judge Kavanaugh was his own selection based on Judge Kavanaugh's clear and impeccable credentials that your uh, previous guest just cited. He's a man of uh, incredible intellect, a man of uh, impeccable so, credentials, and has uh, swayed many decisions and court opinions across the country, including at the highest court. You talked about some of his writings, uh, and Democrats are talking about some of Brett Kavanaugh's writings as well, as you might imagine, specifically some of his pieces he wrote in law review articles in 98 and in 2009 related to presidents under investigation. Here's what Chuck Schumer had to say here this morning. Listen. On this issue, the Mueller issue, which came up after the vetting by these two groups, uh, he's probably the most extreme, and it wouldn't surprise me if that was very important to Donald Trump, knowing Donald Trump, and I have no proof, do you think he didn't inquire about this right. either directly or indirectly, knowing Donald Trump? What do you think? So, Raj, I'll pose the question to you. Did the president consider, bring up, look at the writings on investigations that Kavanaugh had, had put out? Well, let me just uh, clear the air a little bit. Uh, the 2009 writing that, that folks have been citing has to do with a legislative fix to the special counsel uh, from a legislative perspective and not uh, enumerating constitutional powers. But leaving that aside, uh, no, the president did not ask him about specific cases or hypotheticals. Uh, he asked him broadly how he would approach the law, how um, Judge Kavanaugh, through his hundreds of writings, as, I, as I've uh, often stated, did? Um, you know, if you look, no, hang on, Hallie, what? if you look through them, uh, let me let me just answer go the ahead, question. Go, go ahead. If, you, if you look through his writings, there are some that expand executive power, there are some that may limit executive power, but the consistent strain is a judge who interprets the law as it was written and the Constitution as it was written and intended and doesn't uh, legislate from the bench or doesn't create law from the bench. You talked about the 2009 piece. There's also the 1988 article. I want to pull them up on sure. screen if we can, because he was he was clear about where he stood. Now, you're, that is not a ruling. That was a law review article. You're correct in that. But yes or no, did the conversation on the potential for indictment materials come up during the discussion related to Kavanaugh, either with the president, with Don McGahn, at any point? No, again. Uh, you, you didn't it, look it, at any of that? I mean, you had to have seen these writings. I, I'm not saying that his public record is not something the White House has seen. We've seen all of his writings. We've seen uh, his 300 Including plus, uh, the pieces opinions. we're talking about, right? Just y to yes, clarify. Hallie, yes, Hallie. Everything in his public record has been reviewed. But what I am stating is that the president asked him about his approach to the law, his philosophy, and how he would adjudicate cases, which is according to the letter uh, of the law and how okay. it was written. Did the president ever bring up those discussions that Kavanaugh had had, had written about regarding indictments and investigations? Did the president ever talk about that with McGahn, with anyone else in the White House? Uh, no. The president, again, the president is focused on Judge Kavanaugh's approach to the law, his fidelity to the Constitution, and the law as it was written. So should Brett Kavanaugh, if he is confirmed, as you guys at the White House hope happens uh, and ends up on the court, should he recuse himself if a question related to the special counsel investigation comes yeah, up before the know, Supreme Court? Hallie, we've been getting that question. I think it's yeah. kind of absurd. This is a sitting 
U.S. Uh, judge, uh, judge in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. Uh, on any matters that may involve recusal, he will follow the law. But beyond that, uh, there's nothing else to state. Okay. Not a, not a totally absurd question, right? There's a special counsel investigation happening. It's possible questions related that could end up on the court. It's possible Brett Kavanaugh ends up on the court. It sounds like you're keeping that option open. You're saying Brett Kavanaugh will make that decision I, when the time comes. That, Am I I'm understanding saying that, that he will follow the law. Okay. Let me ask you about the Hill battle, because that is starting today. We know the vice president, in a matter of, what, an hour, is going to end up on Capitol Hill meeting with Mitch McConnell, bringing uh, Brett Kavanaugh, starting some of those conversations. None of the red state Democrats that will be critical, potentially, to this attended the White House announcement last night, although I know you said they were uh, invited, I believe. Has yeah. the president reached out to any of them in the last 18 hours or so since this announcement was made? Well, the president uh, did invite them to the White House prior to uh, picking Judge Kavanaugh and, and heard their views. Uh, it's a little unfortunate that they didn't come last night, but uh, they're going to have an opportunity uh, and be in, uh, um, you know, allowed to have a meeting with the judge. And, um, and they can kick the tires. They can ask him his views on uh, broadly on constitutional matters, uh, see how he approaches the law. Uh, and I think that they're going to see what we've been seeing, uh, and they're going to uh, walk away impressed. I think that... Um, you know, senators from both parties uh, are going to be impressed with him. As you mentioned, um, you know, moderate Republicans and some Democrats voted for his confirmation um, in 2006. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, we expect, um, you know, at least they will give him a, a, a fair hearing and uh, proceed accordingly. You're talking about Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski, I believe, these moderate Republicans who did vote for mm -hmm. Kavanaugh's confirmation. Are you confident that they will do so again and that so will, let's say, Rand Paul? Well, I think uh, the senators are going to have an opportunity to uh, meet with Judge Kavanaugh, to uh, ask him his views. And I think, again, I think that they're going to come away impressed and be inclined uh, to support okay. his uh, nomination. Uh, Raj, before I let you go, let me just have you put on your, your sort of comms White House hat here, because the president sure. is on his way, as you know, to Brussels. I'm heading there later today. Uh, much of the, the, the White House aides are. Why would the president say it's easier to meet with the leader of the country who interfered with our election, Vladimir Putin, than for our allies? Why would he say that? Well, first off, um, and let me just address the premise here, um, the president has stated publicly, repeatedly, uh, that he agrees with the intelligence assessment uh, from U.S. intelligence agencies about meddling uh, in the 2016 election. I would push election. back on that. The let president me, hasn't on, been Hallie, as definitive. Hallie, wait a Hallie, second, Raj. He, wait, wait, wait. The president has not been that definitive. And just a couple weeks ago, he raised a question, it seemed on Twitter, about whether, in fact, that was really the case. He said that Vladimir Putin has, has pushed made a back distinction. on that in conversations. Hang on, hang on, Hallie. He has made a Th distinction. That's also not the point of the hang, question I'm Hallie, asking. But let me let me but let me let me please address this. He's made a distinction between meddling and actually influencing the outcome. Um, but on on uh, his remarks earlier uh, today, he's been making the point for years now that member nations of NATO need to increase their defense spending. They need they need to meet the uh, two percent of GDP mark. Some countries aren't doing that. NATO countries are in the front line of the common defense. They need to be uh, contributing more, and they're not going to do it unless the United States, led by this president, apply mm -hmm. pressure. But raising Vladimir Putin above these NATO allies, do you believe that's appropriate to give that kind of weight? I think the president is doing the right thing. He's going to go there and meet with the uh, EU countries. He's also going to meet with the UK and uh, with uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, and I think they're going to be very productive discussions. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Why don't you subscribe? It's really easy. Just click on that button down there. And for more news from MSNBC, click on any of these videos here for the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more videos from MSNBC with our newsletters. Head over to msnbc.com newsletters to sign up.